Beetlejuice 2, the non-spoiler review. Tim Burton returns years later to bring back the iconic Beetlejuice, played by Michael Keaton. Winona Ryder returns as Lydia Dietz. Jenna Ortega showing up. It's Wednesday. Star is now Winona Ryder's daughter, Lydia Dietz's daughter in this one, and Justin Theroux, Catherine O'Hara. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, uh, Monica Bellucci. Uh, shoot, Willem Dafoe. I mean, come on. So this is a movie that I have been very excited for. It is one of my, like I've always mentioned, I'm not like a massive Tim Burton fan, respect the man very much so for his body of work, but I'm not like a, a, a huge fan, but I am a big Beetlejuice fan. Beetlejuice is my favorite Tim Burton movie overall. And I think that it is one of those movies where it just, it stands the test of time. It's done so much. So when they announced this movie, I was excited for it. It's been in the works forever. I think 2014 was the first time when they started even sniffing around this thing. It's been, People have been ready for it. So trailers have come out, and then it's like, oh, the excitement is starting to get there. And I can tell you that from the screening alone that I that I went to, it was, it was half critics, it was half uh, fans, and and there are people that were dressed up as Lydia Dietz. They were in the, in the red dress. There are people dressed up as Beetlejuice. It, it was, it, it's a thing. So people are excited. So I'll tell you this about the movie and the same thing I did now the theater reaction. I'll just start it and give it to you, rip the bandaid off. I think this movie is good, not great. But what does that mean? It means that if this is a movie that if you're a Beetlejuice fan, you got to see this movie in the theater. Why? Because it's great to see Beetlejuice back. What happens? Well, Lydia Dietz, years later, has now been able to channel her gift to talk to the dead, and she's now a talk show host. She's got some issues. Her one of the her her producer boyfriend is Justin Theroux, who is trying to lead her through. You know, hey, get your stuff together. You can do this. Let's make this work together. And then. Something happens. Well, there's a funeral. We'll say there's a funeral. She gets a phone call, and there's a funeral, and in that funeral, she has to be uh, not only team back up with, uh, with, with Delia, played by the great Catherine O'Hara, she now has to try to form a relationship with her estranged daughter in, uh, in Jenna Ortega. So when they go back to the original house, obviously, things go down, and something's happening in the underworld where you know who, Beetlejuice, has to come into play. Now, that alone to me is a story of like, okay, that's 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 interesting. But then, as I mentioned, you got Willem Dafoe, who plays like a detective in the underworld, and then you got Monica Bellucci, who is the kind of, she's, I don't want to, again, give a, a spoiler away, but there's something, to, she's involved with Beetlejuice. You see in the trailer, she's like, where's Beetlejuice? Where's Beetlejuice? And there's something that she's doing. And then you've got the Jenna Ortega story, where she, she's trying to, you know, get not only patch things up or trying to have some kind of relationship with her mother, that there's another thing that happens to her while she's in this town. So uh, Catherine O'Hara has a story that she's developing, right? Justin Thoreau has something he's trying to court more so and have more of a relationship with Winona Ryan. So there's a lot going on in a movie that's an hour and 45 minutes. Um, I think that that's sometimes where you're just like, there's just so much that you wish that they were just kind of focused on one particular thing. And what I said was, I wish that they would have really focused in on the Jenna Ortega um, Winona Ryder stuff because that's the stuff that really worked for me. And then there's one particular storyline that she is going through, uh, Jenna Ortega, that is. That I was like, oh, this is kind of that tone where the original movie with um, Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin, their story, the Maitlands were the ones that kind of kept everything. You had all this wackiness that was going on with the underworld and even the Dietzes and everything too, but there was that relationship that the Maitlands had and then with Lydia that had that kind of through line and it and it made it in in all this kookiness felt real and there is that it is there in this movie but this movie goes cuckoo at some points um but that's like you know like i said it sometimes when you see a movie in a sequel you're like that didn't even feel like the same tone it didn't even feel like it doesn't feel like it's in the Beetlejuice world. This feels like it's in the Beetlejuice world. It's fun to be back here. It's fun to be back here. And that's the thing. I think people are going to ask you that. Did you have fun watching this movie? 100%. I enjoyed watching it the whole way through. I had a smile on my face every time Beetlejuice was on. I had a smile the second that Lydia Deed showed up and she starts talking. Um, and it's just, you know, is the is the story as solid as the other one? No, it's not. And the the But I mentioned this early on a different show where it's like Wayne's World 1, really fun. Wayne's World 2, 
It's a worthy succession. This is the same thing. Worthy succession. It's a it's a it's a good it's a it's a good sequel to um to, to the it feels like a Beetlejuice movie. It does. And the and what I liked was we used the, the with the practical effects and the claymation and all those types of things, like that all adds in. Um they do like the Willem Dafoe stuff as much as I like Willem Dafoe, kind of unnecessary. And they throw, it almost feel, plays off like a little Roger Rabbity more than than Beetlejuice. Uh, there's some stuff that gets a little dark, which you know you're dealing with death in the underworld. You, that's gonna happen. Um, but the music, Danny Elfman's score, obviously wonderful, takes you in there. It's 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 so great to hear those familiar things. And I think that what he does well, Tim Burton in this movie was the nostalgia stuff that they play in. It doesn't just feel like member berries, right? It feels like relevant to the story and relevant to the things that are happening. Um, and there's mentions to the original and what had happened in the past and how it actually plays in and how the model works into it, that it was like, oh, well, they're not just going, hey, remember that? It's like, no, it's all relevant to the story itself. And so that's the stuff that I really dug about it. So as I said, like I never, like, and I was, I was locked into the story. I was locked into it. It's like, I think that that's one of the things that when you go into it, because especially if you're a fan of Beetlejuice, you want this movie to be great. Of course you do. Of course you want it to be great. You want it to be like, oh, the Empire Strikes Back of the Beetlejuice franchise. Really, like, this is just the, this is the best. It's the Godfather 2. It's better than the first. It's not. Um, but what does that mean? Does that mean you shouldn't see it? Of course you should see it. If you're a Beetlejuice fan, you got to see this movie. You got to. You got to put some popcorn in your face. And you got to watch Beetlejuice crack some jokes. And some of the jokes land really, really well. Some of them are a little tired, but who cares? Again, I was just happy to see Beetlejuice back on the big screen. I think that's what it is. Um, did it feel like a cash grab? No, it didn't. That's that's one of the main things. Did it feel like, oh, they're just milking this just to try to get people in the theater? No. It seems like Tim Burton and everybody involved had fun making this movie. It was the story they wanted to tell. Do I think there could have been a stronger story and maybe tightened it up a little bit? Yeah. But it didn't feel like, oh, man, they shouldn't even touch this thing again. Absolutely not. I liked being back here. I liked seeing everybody. I liked being back in the town. I liked being around with uh, with Lydia. I like to, to see where Lydia has gone, the relationship she's been in. There's, I mean, I can't get into spoilers, but there's sometimes when you're in the underworld with it, but this is what Tim Burton does with it. That if some, like, let's just say, I'm making this up. Let's say that, um, you know, uh, it, it, in order to get to the underworld or what happened to me in, in my life, uh, my this thing fell on my head and half my face was off. Well, in, my under, in the underworld, I got to live with half a face. And it's like, it's part of the fun of the Tim Burton makeup is to do that. But it's just like, there's some things that happen. There's one particular guy that he's trying to have this emotional moment. And the thing that's happening with him, I'm like, I can't take you serious because you got this going on. And it that took me out a little bit. But then I'm like, yeah, that's a, but, but at the same time, the same time when I was thinking that, I'm going, it's a Tim Burton movie. It's it was all weird shit going on. And it's supposed to. You're in the underworld. So overall, if I'm going to go out of, uh, out of five, I would say... I'm going to go 3.6 out of 5 overall for Beetlejuice uh, 2. Enjoyable movie. Good sequel. As I said in the beginning of this, good, not great. I would encourage anybody that's interested in this movie, I said, well, should I wait for streaming? No, don't wait for streaming. Go see it in the theater. Go have a good time. It is an event film. As I said, there are people dressed up. It's an event, it's an event film. And it just feels good to see the big guy back on screen. It really does, and Michael Keaton's fantastic. Uh, so so good. Doesn't he, you don't notice that you know because you're like oh, it was 30 years ago. Does he like when you look at the Irishman and you see they're trying to use makeup for uh, or or C CGI rather for De Niro to watch him pretend that he's stomping on somebody when he's 30, but he looks 65, 70 years old. It's noticeable. Not noticeable in this. Not noticeable that he's that he's older. You can't tell. Guys, have missed a beat. He's great. So good. Tim Burton also does a very good job directing this movie. Um, he's, he's a legend. And the the end, I will say, the end for me, I was just like, the, like the very, the very end. I'm like, what was that? I don't know if we needed that, but some people have fun with it. Anyway, that's it. It's my review. Um, go see Beetlejuice 2. And let me know what you think after you see it. Put your comments in there. This movie's going to do very well in the theater. People are going to go see this movie. It's going to be one of those things people are talking about. So I'm curious what you think. Did you like the original Beetlejuice? Do you not even care about this one? Or are you a Beetlejuice fanatic and you can't wait to see it? Put your comments in there. Tell me what you think. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to 
build up the uh, the audience here to see more of these reviews out of the theater reactions, all this stuff that we do. We have actual movie reactions that we're launching on Friday. Myself and UFC legend Matt Serra are going to be reviewing Borderlands, or reacting to, rather, Borderlands on Friday. So come check that out. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. See you later.